After nearly 20 videos on Chinese carbon bike builds and AliExpress components, I have had countless of questions, some very odd and some very valid. Now today I'm gonna to tackle the most common questions and group them into topics and they are, do products take ages to arrive? Have I paid any import tax on those products? Are the products any good? How is the quality? Are there warranty and returns available? Have I had any issues with the product so far? Now, if you combine all of these questions, you can answer the one main question, and that is, is it worth buying Chinese carbon components or products direct from Asia? Aha, the good question. Now let's start with ordering. Now, when you are ordering products, make sure you do your research. Don't just jump in head over heels and buy a frame from a dodgy website that looks like it's from the 90s. Now AliExpress gets some hate, but at least it's kind of regulated. Now I've never had a product not arrive from AliExpress before. I have had some rubbish products though, more on that later. Now one of the things I can advise is to message the seller, that way you can see how they interact and respond to your queries. It also opens up communication, so if anything goes wrong down the line, you know where you can message them and ask how you can send products back to uh, Asia. Yeah, that's probably not happening. With better known brands like Elves or Yolio, Windspace, often they have a distributor in specific countries. So when you're buying it, look for the distributor in your country. Delivery, now this is one of the most common questions I get. How long is delivery? Are there any import charges? So firstly, delivery times will depend on what you are buying and where from. AliExpress, for example, has a 15 day delivery on many products. If you buy directly from a seller's website, then you have to trust their word. From my experience, frames take around four to six weeks. Wheels are around the same time as frames, so four to six weeks as well. Group sets around four weeks, unless the 15 days is specified. Small components like saddles, bar tape, pedals, etc. You can get most of them for 15 days from AliExpress. I think the key here is to not be in a rush. Now, if you are, then you'll most likely be peeking through your letterbox every day, disappointed that your product hasn't traveled 5,000 miles in two days. It's a long old way. As for the packaging itself, I've never actually had an issue. Most things come packed ready for a disaster or to be thrown off the back of a van or something, especially the frames and the wheels. As for import tax, I live in London and I've only paid import tax on one delivery. This was a frame and wheels that arrived together. I was a little surprised though when the DPD driver asked me for 100 quid on my doorstep. Quality, now from my experience, the frames seem to have the best sort of overall quality. Now where quality starts lacking is where there are lots of moving parts like derailers for example, saddles are another good example, magnetic bottle cages. All of these products that seem too good to be true, they need tighter tolerances and to be better made, they're normally the ones with the issues in my experience. Now my biggest annoyance with a lot of these products is that we, the consumers, are basically the guinea pigs. We are the testers, but that leaves anyone who purchased the first iteration, the first version, out of pocket. This method of bringing products to the market, it does grind my gears, I'm not gonna lie, pun intended. I just don't think that we should be the guinea pigs and the testers and basically foot in the bill. Yeah, a little bit of a rant on that. So from experience, if something is new to the market, wait for everyone else to find the issues and buy the second or third version, it's probably gonna be better. Cost is normally what it comes down to and in the case of buying cheaper products direct from Asia, it is pretty much about cost saving. Now this is partly driven, I think, because Western brands' prices are just extortionate, to be honest. Because the prices are cheaper, people will say things like, you get what you pay for. And I understand that, but it doesn't mean that just because it's cheaper, it's bad. Here is my take on it. Now when people talk about buying direct from Asia, they are comparing that to buying from Western brands. Where are the frames and components from Western brands made? in Asia. So you, in many cases, are simply skipping the middleman. Now what that middleman normally offers though is a warranty or buyer assurance or some would say better customer service. Really? <laughs> now you can't argue that brands like Giant, Specialized, Cannondale, they all offer a lifetime warranty on their frames. This isn't normally offered when you buy direct from Asia. Here are some of my experience with products for reference and the cost. Now my Olio R11 frame, the white one behind me, that was £1,300 and it performs and feels great, I would highly recommend. My Els Falaf Pro and Els Falaf Evo frames were around the £900 mark 
and they have both been great so far. Again, I would recommend. My light carbon gravel frame was 500 pounds, which is a bargain in the grand scheme of buying frames. And that is super, super solid, well made, and it also has a custom paint job, which was an extra like 100 pounds, I think it was. On the contrary, my L2 RX hydraulic group set was 350 pound, and that's been nothing short of a pain in the ass, and I wouldn't buy it again. Now my EC90 saddle, for 13 pounds is very comfortable solid and looks great i'd buy one for all of my bikes and save myself like 30 40 quid for a similar saddle from a western brand now warranty and returns now i mentioned earlier that most frames from western brands offer a lifetime warranty this isn't normally the case when buying direct from asia but they do offer around five years which is still pretty good always read the small print on these warranties because i think people get a little bit optimistic with what's covered it's only manufacturing defects that are covered no crashes in packs over tightening of bolts etc looking at wheels and buying wheels they tend to have similar warranty to frames but if we look at smaller components like saddles or group sets and this is where the lines get a little bit blurry for me realistically you aren't going to send something back to asia if it goes wrong i think you will be hard pushed to potentially get a refund from some of these sellers as well not that I've had to try or I've gone through the hassle of doing it. To be honest, I kind of accept that I'm taking that risk. If it works, great, I've saved some money. If it doesn't, I'm not gonna spend hours trying to fight to get a refund for a product that is like 20 pounds. Now I have experienced a few issues along the way. Here are some of them. Now the L's for Laf Evo derailleur hanger wouldn't allow my front mech, my Shimano front mech to go low enough. However, L sent me some replacements to fix that issue. The L2 hydraulic group set had countless issues. While I had very high hopes and I was sort of suckered in by the marketing, I'm just not convinced by the quality. Then there was Francis Cade's lever that snapped on his first ride and Trace Fellow is now having issues with the electric group sets from L2 as well. These issues should be fixed before it even hits the market. I have the Sensor Empire group set on my L's for Laugh Pro, that's the 11 speed and it works, it just, doesn't have that tight together feeling. It's okay, but would I buy it again? Probably not. As I said, the magnetic bottle cages were a disaster that I bought. I thought I'd give them a try and I could tell as soon as we got it out of the box, it was a massive failure. One mount snapped when I was like putting it on. So yeah, never again. Here are some of my recommendations on how to get the best product for the best price. Now, use Western group set. Now I know Shimano are under fire right now, but from my experience, I've never had any issues, so I can only go by my sort of lived experience. Once the sensors and l trues of the world have more experience and user testing is better factored into their process, I will reconsider and I will use them. Next up, look for reviews before you buy. I'm not talking about fake one-line reviews. I'm talking about in-depth reviews with thousands of miles of testing. Now, YouTube is a good place to start. <laughs> That's a wonderful idea. I may have a video or two. Next up, if it's too good to be true, then it probably is. If you can get some carbon bars for 10 pound, what are the chances of them snapping? Probably quite high. So use your instinct, my friends. It's normally right. Also, if there is loads of hype for this new great ground thing, this new product that's meant to be the best thing since sliced bread, it usually isn't. Wait and see how it all unfolds and see if it is actually any good. Lastly, from my experience, you can save a fortune on wheels and frames. You should focus your attention there because that's where the biggest savings are. You can save thousands of pounds on those two products alone and then spend the savings on a solid group set, for example. So the million dollar question, or well, a few hundred pound or thousand pound question, is it worth doing? Here's my honest truth, having built five of these bikes. I think a hybrid approach works best. Buy some components direct from Asia, and some from Western brands. Take the best bits from each and you'll save money and get the best bang for your buck. So now you know what to buy, click here to watch me build a full road bike from scratch using a mixture of Western components and products direct from Asia. It's pretty insightful, I made a few mistakes. You'll have a giggle and probably learn something along the way.